Now that my assignment to stop the execution had ended in such an unsatisfactory way, I decided to go see Lin at the Justice Minister's office. Detective Zhao's story about this other murder weighs heavily on me. Should I tell Lin about it? I just don't know. This time, Lin isn't dead, but the atmosphere makes me think it might be too soon to count my blessings just yet. Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd the Show where I talk about roleplay games and today we're going to be playing Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and we helped Jowd break out of jail, but our efforts were for naught as Cabanella took him in once again just immediately after he was let out. In this episode, we've arrived at the Justice Minister's office and Lynn is here and it seems, seems she's in quite the panic. I'm glad Lynn isn't dead. But what in the world is she doing? Then again, how, do I really want to know? Let's talk to her first. Eek! What kind of greeting is that? I mean, I know I'm a ghost and everything, but... Well, and? How did it go? Was Detective Jowd still alive? He had already been executed by the time I got there. But I did, I did manage to save him, but... You did? Oh, I'm so glad! Wait a minute, did you say but? I told Lynn about my adventure at the prison. About that other murder, though. I couldn't bring myself to tell her. Inspector Capanello d arrested Detective Jowd? I can't believe it! Yeah, I feel the same way. I can't believe that wherever I go, somebody always is always dead. Either you or someone else. Sorry about that. So, who's that lying on the floor there? Oh, you noticed him, did you? That's the Justice Minister, the man who signed the order to carry out Detective Jowd's execution. He was already dead when I got here. Shouldn't you have called, him for, called for help in that case? Hmm, I guess so. But I'm wanted, remember? For murder? I was hoping we could save him without me getting caught. We, oui, eh? Oh boy. Hey, can you hear me? Hmm. He's dead, but he still seems to be unconscious. C could you rescue him now, while he's still unconscious? Instead of talking to him, I bet it'll be faster to just see for yourself what really happened. Yeah, I bet you're right. Back we go then, to four minutes before his death. Rewind time. Emma! Oh, excuse me. What? All right. I'll do as you say. This is terrible. Why doesn't she answer? Medicine. Gah! Water.
Shut your foolish man. I hope you guys are okay with me doing doing the just having the justice minister's voice, the same voice as the uh, chief from one of the previous episodes. But his voice was just so fun to do that I'm gonna sort of recycle it. I'll try to maybe do something different with it, but I don't know if I can. Oh, he woke up. He's a contradiction. Contradiction. The more we search for the truth, the further we fall into the further into dilemma we fall. The world of men is steeped in contradictions. If we choose this, we can't have that. If a man tries to have his medicine bottle and a water pitcher, he loses both. Oh, I don't know. To me, it looks like you could have had both of those things just now. He didn't know the truth about the world. That's why he died. Such a foolish man. Or maybe I should say a pathetic man. That's a more fitting word. Uh, I don't think this guy gets it yet. That the foolish and pathetic man is him. Is this what they call a contradiction? By the way, what's your name? Just called me a seeker of truth. Sidestepped that one, didn't he? So this is one that's sort of timed in a very specific way where you have to do some things extremely quickly and extremely specifically to the point where, you know, if you do something slightly wrong, then you probably need to start over. And it's this lady from the chicken kitchen. Forgive me for calling so late, Mr. Minister. Who is this? How did you get this number? We have your daughter. Who is this, Amelie's tutor? Would a tutor call you at this hour? N no. I'll have to say it one more time. We have your daughter. What? My daughter, is she alright? Tell me she's alright. Here for yourself. Papa, help. I'm gonna be killed. What do you want? What are your demands? I believe we already made our demand known the other day. Oh, so it was you. And you have complied? Has the execution been carried out? I didn't do it because of your demand. I did it because that's my job. Yes, yes, of course. They should be contacting me with any minute now with a confirmation. There's no need for this kidnapping. We're very thorough. You did do well to remember that. Ah, uh, And of course, it goes without saying, we're watching you. This information leaves that room. You'll never see your daughter again. I trust you understand that. Don't tell the police, is that it? Exactly. All you have to do is your job. Alright, I'll do as you say. I'll make sure the execution is carried out tonight. You have my word. Let's stay here for now. Trace complete. So now we do have that phone number in our possession uh, for when we need it, but uh, we're just going to stay here for now because, of course, we need to save the Justice Minister. The kidnapping, eh? Once again, I'm not sure I know what that word means, but it's apparently the cause of the Minister's attack. Such a useless man. Huh? A useless man caught up in a useless case. Why doesn't he understand that? Anyway, we only have four minutes here. I better do something about that medicine. There's not really anything we can do about the medicine, so let's just keep watching. I have to call my wife. I have to see if it's true. Maybe they called the wrong person. This minister doesn't accept the truth easily. He's morally bankrupt. Okay, now you're taking it too far. His wife won't answer for some reason. Hmm, a wife who doesn't answer a phone. I think I know who that is. A morally bankrupt man deserves a morally bankrupt wife. 
Why doesn't that man understand that? Now I'm sorry I ever brought this guy along. Just kinda waiting here. Why doesn't she answer? He freaks out for a bit. Uh-oh, here it comes. His worry and anxiety have reached their peak. Such a disgraceful man. Huh? If one lives his life in fits, he's bound to be plagued by fits. It's so simple. Why doesn't he understand? There wasn't a chance to rescue him before now. It's not over yet, though. I can't give up now. So we're just going to kind of watch him have a heart attack for a little bit. Then once he reaches for the water... I want to flap this flag, which will keep the water on the table and allow for him to drink it. There, that should help. At least now he's had some water. He's still breathing, apparently, but he looks far from recovered, unfortunately. Such a wishy-washy man. Huh? He can't make up his mind whether he wants to live or die. That's how he lives his life. Okay. Uh, at least I bought some time with to get his medicine to him. Now that we've done that, we want to go ahead and flap the flag once more, which will allow us to hopefully... Come on, I'm getting close to it. We're supposed to attach to the ceiling fan. The minister's fate has been changed, but the situation still seems the same. I can't move anywhere now. Did I miss... Oh, I think... Oh, hold on. I forgot to do something real quick. Again, you've got to be very specific and do things at a very specific time. time. So let's go ahead and wait through this right now and then once we get back to the part where we're supposed to do stuff then i'll go ahead and get back to you on that all right so when he reaches for his water it's going to tip that over and you want to immediately attach to the water the uh, water pitcher once he raises it up in the air go ahead and attach to the ceiling fan immediately rate has been changed and now we can actually start to do stuff again Alright, so once you're up here, you want to go ahead and spin the ceiling fan. This will allow for you to attach to these documents here, which will fly across the room and will allow us to get over here. There's a few things that we need to do. First of all, we need to make a sort of seesaw system. Okay, time for the next step. Now about this medicine bottle. If the minister is going to make a full recovery, I have to deliver this thing to him. But how's a ghost with no hands or feet supposed to do that? I guess I just have to use my head instead. So we need to make a sort of seesaw system, which will allow us to do various other things. The first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and we want to turn this thing real quick. Uh, but then we want to undo that thing. And we want to make this thing fall, which will allow us to do something a little later. Now, reattaching to this I want to go ahead and turn this, turn the globe stand, which will allow us to spin this globe. Right, and that'll knock over that vase. Now that we've done that, we want to undo the frame hanger, and that'll allow us to make this sort of seesaw thing right here. So now that we've done that, 
we make this sort of seesaw here, and we want to roll this globe. So now that we've done that, we want to open this curtain, which will allow us to go back over here. And we want to go ahead and rock this basket. it will knock that vase over, which moves the globe right over there on top of the armor's sword. If we now swing the sword, it knocks the medicine right over to the... Uh, Justice Minister. My medicine! Ah. There. The Minister finally took his medicine. I think maybe even took too much medicine. Such a greedy man. Huh? He's supposed to take two capsules with water. Why doesn't he know that? Uh, cut the guy some slack. There, see? He's the same voice as the guy from the chicken kitchen. I guess in the Ghost Trick universe, whenever you sing, you sound like that. <laughs> Whew! That was a lot of work. Well, hopefully this taught him a lesson. Huh? He greatly underestimated his dependence on his medicine. I hope he learned something from this experience. Firstly, know yourself. That is the key to everything. I think you need to listen to your own advice. Anyway, let's go back to the world of the present. And so the Justice Minister is now back to life, but the furrows on his brow are even deeper now. And apparently our lady detective is the present cause of those furrows. Look, detective. He was sentenced after a fair trial, and the man himself wants to be executed. But there was no evidence. All they had were his own conf confession. But it was no ordinary confession. It was the confession of an esteemed detective. Stay back! I told you, I don't want anybody coming near me. M Mr. Minister, please listen to me. I might be able to gather new evidence in that case tonight. What? So please, please, just give me a little more time. I just got a call from the prison. Your death row convict apparently just escaped. Unfortunately, after all this time, it seems he now wants to dodge his punishment. But when he's apprehended, his sentence will be carried out tonight. No. But when the sentence was handed down, you were against enforcing the death penalty. So why did you sign the order all of a sudden? Well, I, uh, I was simply performing my duty as a justice minister. That's all there is to it. Sissel, there you are. Sounds like the minister is being very stubborn. That's right, he is. Maybe we shouldn't have saved him after all. The minister has to have the execution carried out tonight, and he has a very good reason for it. A good reason? I told Lynn that I had learned what I had learned about the kidnapping. K kidnapping? They kidnapped the justice minister's daughter? Uh, apparently. Oh my goodness! But still. That's still no reason to hurry forward with the execution. Why don't you go ahead and say that to the Justice Minister, then? Hmm, the poor man. I hate to do that to him. Oh, by the way. Do you think you could carry me? Oh, right, sure. Not very handy is it having no legs.
What are you going to do with that globe? Crack me in the head with it. Oh, this? <laughs> pay no attention to this. It's kind of hard not to pay attention to it. By the way, and please pardon me if this is a silly question. Were you talking to somebody just now? But of course not, right? I mean, there's no such thing as ghosts, right? Are you talking about me? Ah! No, there's no such thing. This is a dream. It's nothing but a dream. Don't you remember me? My dream is talking to me. <laughs> so now I'm a dream, eh? Mr. Minister? We know. We know about your daughter. She was kidnapped, wasn't she? And if the execution doesn't take place tonight, you won't see her again. Your medicine, your medicine. Oh, what am I going to do? The death row prisoner has escaped. If he isn't executed tonight, my daughter, my armale. But what if that execution isn't the right thing to do? Ah! Come on, Lynn. If you keep pressing him like that, he's gonna die again. What can I do then? We meet again, Mr. Minister. What? I've never seen you before. In, in any case, I'm a very busy man. If you're a dream, please don't bother me when I'm awake. Uh, I'm not a dream. Looks like it's just a waste of time trying to talk to this guy. I think you're right, stubborn Justice Minister. Please stop speaking ill of me inside my own head. Well, there's only one thing left for us to do. We have to do something about that kidnapping. Until we do that, it'll be, it'll be impossible to get the Justice Minister on our side. And that's the way I see it. I think I'll start by gathering info on the kidnapping. In the only way I know how. I should really pay the, the kidnapper's hideout a visit. After all, if we want the Justice Minister to come around, we have to solve the problem first. I feel like I'm slowly moving away from my own mystery, but I'm not the kind of guy who can abandon a little lady in trouble, so I guess I'm in this for a little while longer. My daughter! Is she alright? Tell me she's alright! Here for yourself. Papa, help! I'm gonna be killed! <laughs> Replace that in post. 